This is the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where 21,444 fans are waiting on the Tar Heels, ranked third this week at 11 and 1. North Carolina will host a decided underdog, the Maryland Terrapins. One of the lasting memories from last year in college basketball was number one North Carolina hosting Maryland in the Dean Smith Center. Lefty Drizel brought in a club that almost won earlier in College Park, but Carolina was heavily favored. But on that February night, the marvelous Len Bias was at his best. And with a performance that basketball fans of every description could cherish, he lifted Maryland to a stunning upset, 77-72, the first and only loss for the Heels in their new palace. It was a great win for Lefty Drizel and his Super star a win to savor but lefty is gone and len bias lives only in our memories the names and faces are different but it's still maryland against north carolina live from the smith center raycom sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions present exclusive live coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference basketball. Tonight, from the Dean Smith Activity Center, the North Carolina Tar Heels take on the Maryland Terrapins. Tonight's game is brought to you by Budweiser, NCNB, Piedmont Airlines, Pepsi, South Carolina National Bank, the Jefferson Pilot Company, Food Lion, and by Central Fidelity. North Carolina has dominated this series with the University of Maryland. As you can see, the wins better than two to one. But Maryland has taken two of the last three, including the last game here in the Smith Center and in the ACC tournament last March. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Dan Bonner. Great to have you with us for ACC basketball. When you take a look at the coaches who are involved in tonight's game, you probably couldn't find a bigger contrast anywhere. I don't think it would be possible, Mike. Of course, you have Bob Wade, who's just in his first year at the University of Maryland. He's got three collegiate wins under his belt. Now, that doesn't mean the man can't coach. At Baltimore's Dunbar High School in 11 years, he won 272 and lost only 24. And that includes one four-year stretch when his team has won 119 and one. Great high school coach just starting his collegiate career. On the other side is Coach Dean Smith from the University of North Carolina. He has the fourth best winning percentage of all time in college basketball. A couple guys named Claire B. Adolph Rupp and John Wooden are better. He's won 590 games. I think this will be the first in a series of great matchups involving these two people. All right, the Mazda game plan is brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. And in the Mazda game plan, we want to take a look at the old and the new for both ball clubs, starting with the University of Maryland. A lot of new. A lot of new, but there's one rock-solid old, and that rock-solid old is seniors as junior center Derek Lewis. Lewis is the leading scorer for the Terrapins. He's the fourth leading scorer in the Atlantic Coast Conference. If Maryland is going to compete not only tonight, but for the rest of the year, Lewis has to play well. Another individual who has played very well for the University of Maryland, who also has to play well tonight, is freshman Steve Hood. Hood from Hyattsville's DeMatha High School is the second leading scorer for the Terrapins. He's their best three-point shooter. I think it's important that he play well, too. For North Carolina, the guy with the most experience is point guard Kenny Smith, who many regard, and including us, I think, as the best point guard in the country. Mike, I really don't think there's any question about that. Smith has all the ingredients that you'd want in a point guard, but particularly his great speed on the fast break is really a big advantage for Carolina. His senior leadership's important. I think if Carolina's going to scale the heights that they wish, then Smith has to be a key player. Another key player for the University of North Carolina is the new, and that is J.R. Reed. Highly touted freshman center. He's now going to start his ninth game for North Carolina. As he improves, so will the Tar Heels. And you'll see North Carolina in the national championship picture once again, I do believe. This has been the Mazda Game Plan, brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. We'll be back with more of our pregame show, Maryland and North Carolina from Chapel Hill, in a moment. Let's 
take a look at the Goodyear inside track, and the thing that strikes you first is Clemson on top, still undefeated, and that 12-0 represents the school record. Clemson's playing very well, Mike. Their last win, their first ACC win, coming against North Carolina State. A big win for the Clemson Tigers, and before the season, not many people considered Clemson a contender for the ACC crown, but Cliff Ellis has some good athletes down there, led by Horace Grant. I think they're going to be a contender. Duke as well, a surprise at 11-1. I think both those teams will have to be contended with. Of course, Duke has done it the way great teams always do. They want it with defense. And as long as they play that defense, they'll be in every game they play. That's the Goodyear inside track, and we'll be back with more from Chapel Hill right after you listen to this. Patrick with Dan Bonner. We're here for ACC basketball in the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill. North Carolina 11-1, ranked third this week against Maryland. The Terrapins are 3-2. Right now, let's get the starting lineups for both ball clubs from public address announcer Carney Andrews. Good evening and welcome to Smith Center. Tonight, the Tar Heels host the Terrapins of the University of Maryland. Here are the starters for tonight's game. At forward for Maryland, number 23, Dave Dickerson. At forward for North Carolina, number 43, Curtis Hunter. For the Terrapins at forward, number 44, Steve Hood. And for the Tar Heels, number 35, Dave Popson. Center for Maryland, number 33, Derek Lewis. At center for North Carolina, number 34, J.R. Reed. At guard for Maryland, number 11, Tayon McCoy. At guard for North Carolina, number 14, Jeff Lebo. For the Terrapins at guard, number 21, John Johnson. And for the Tar Heels, number 30, Kenny Smith. The head coach for the Terrapins is Bob Wade, and for the Tar Heels, Dean Smith. There's Dean Smith, 590 career victories. And there are our officials tonight, Larry Lembo, David Dodge, and Rusty Herring. Of the matchups which will be critical tonight for the University of Maryland because uh, there are some obviously some mismatches in here. There sure are. North Carolina has a decided height advantage inside. Reed and Popson both at about six foot ten. Derek Lewis, the tallest Maryland Terrapin, he's listed at six feet seven. I don't think he's that tall. I think it's going to be real important for Maryland to try to control the tempo of the game. A very fast tempo is going to favor North Carolina, so I think the play of McCoy and Johnson for Maryland against Lebo and Kenny Smith for North Carolina may be one of the other keys to the game. Of course, what new coach Bob Wade always did in high school was run as much as he could and use pressure defense. The question now, does he have enough horses to be able to play that way? I think he answered that question on Saturday against North Carolina State. He did not run. He tried to control the tempo in the first half. They played very well in the first half, leading in halftime, so they've got some capable athletes, but I think they're going to have to try to control the tempo today. Joe Wolf. Popson as Joe Wolf is out tonight. Popson jump center and North Carolina controls the tap. Kenny Smith and Lebo in the backcourt. Quickly into Reed, had it blocked. And Reed put it back in. Derek Lewis got the block shot. He's one of the finest shot blockers in the country. But Reed had inside position. J.R. Reed showing something that Maryland has to avoid, and that is the ability to get the offensive rebound. This is Tion McCoy and John Johnson in the backcourt. Maryland has almost no firepower back from a year ago. There's Dickerson with an offensive rebound, and the follow is good. Dave Dickerson out of OR South Carolina. Dickerson did not get to play a great deal last year for the University of Maryland, but he's an excellent athlete. He showed you right there that he can get in and get on the board. Curtis Hunter will start it forward. Tonight. Kenny Smith, three-pointer, won't go. Saved, and Lebo will pop for three. Another long rebound saved by Hunter, but Maryland's got it. This is John Johnson, the sophomore from Knoxville, Tennessee. He doesn't want to push it up. Johnson really had a three-on-two opportunity, Mike, but you saw that he pulled it back out. Trying to get him to Hood with Curtis Hunter on him. Knocked out of bounds. Out to Maryland. Well, that would be a 
pretty good matchup. You notice the University of Maryland as you get a look at Coach Dean Smith, but Maryland had the side cleared over there for Hood. Curtis Hunter did a nice defensive job. Maryland has three players back that played a year ago in the lineup. Between them, they averaged 15.8 points. That's all that's coming back on offense for this club. North Carolina, very aggressive in a man-to-man -man defense to start the game, and had a walk call against Steve Hood. Here's Bob Wade. As Dan told you earlier, he had a four-year streak in high school with Baltimore Dunbar. 119 wins, one loss. That must have been a sad night. And three national championships. It was probably a happy night for the team that beat him. Nice pass inside to Thompson. Kenny Smith hit him perfectly. Thompson has his first two, and North Carolina regains the lead. North Carolina scored their two buckets on easy layups by inside people. That's something that Maryland will have to guard against if they're going to stay in the game. Hood double teamed by the draft, knocked out of bounds. They said Hood cuts the last. Good double team by the University of North Carolina. The Maryland Terrapins are going to have to try to stay away from the end lines and out of the corners because Carolina will trap them very effectively. Smith with a fake. Guarded by Tion McCoy, runner-up uh, Mr. Basketball Conference in the Anna last year. Maryland in the man-to-man -man defense. Good help by John Johnson to stop Popson from getting to the hoop. Reed can handle the ball pretty good for a guy who's 6'9", Curtis Hunter dribbled it off his foot. That is not a violation. You have to pick it to make it a violation. Shot clock is down to 12 seconds, and Reed force one. Thompson tries to follow. Loose ball picked up by Merrill. Good defense by the Terrapins on that particular sequence, Mike. John Johnson has got to provide some offense from outside. He's guarded by Levo. Maryland doesn't appear to be attacking very much on offense, Mike. They're very tentative. Derek Lewis has not touched the ball on offense. There's Dickerson in the lane. Lewis fighting for the offensive rebound, and Reed ripping away. J.R. Reed showing you some strength as a rebounder right there, Mike. Great pass to Thompson. Thompson made the shot harder than he had to. He was wide open and didn't know it. I think he was surprised that there was nobody there, Mike. Smith for three. And it's 7-2, to Carolina. North Carolina has made very effective use of that three-point opportunity. They've scored 70, well, that's 71 now, three-point goals on the season. McCoy, Reed, offensive foul, yes. Tion McCoy has had foul trouble. Not a very good decision by Tion McCoy. He does a nice job beating the double-team pressure, but as J.R. Reed comes over to help, Tion McCoy had to find an open man. In his defense, though, as you get a look at the end of that replay, there was not another Maryland player coming into the picture. They have to come and help Tion McCoy. Steve Bucknall into the ballgame, sophomore 6'6", out of London. And Curtis Hunter will get a breather. It's 7-2, North Carolina over Maryland, 16-22 to go first half from Chapel Hill. Since losing that early game to UCLA, North Carolina has been very, very tough against everybody. And they beat some fine ball clubs in the process. Good block out that time by Maryland. Derek Lewis getting the rebound. This is Johnson. Lebo right in his face. That's really good defense, Mike, to get in a guy's face and to make him back up is his first step. And that's exactly what John Johnson did. Dickerson comes outside to relieve some of the pressure. And you're right, Maryland does not seem to be doing a lot. Now they get the right side cleared for McCoy, and they're trying to get Lewis over there. I think the Terrapins are trying to prevent that double team by North Carolina, but they're not having very much success attacking the basket. Shot clock down to eight seconds. Close as they've been at 17 feet. Finally get it to Lewis, and he's fouled. Thompson will commit the personal his first. Thompson's another guy who's had foul trouble this year. He's fouled out of three ball games. Now, Bob Wade can't be very pleased with the way Maryland is playing on offense so far. On that particular occasion, Lewis got inside and stepped in front of J.R. Reed and was able to receive the pass from McCoy. I think the reason that occurred is everyone was standing around inside waiting for McCoy to make a move. Ranzino Smith is into the ballgame for the first time, as is Scott Williams, number 42, off Dean Smith's bench. Lewis free throw won't go in. He's only a 60% shooter. He's been working on a badly sprained ankle. Looks like he's got a very heavy brace on that ankle, Mike. It's the, his left ankle. He's got a real heavy wrap on there. I don't know that I've ever seen a wrap. It's almost like an ankle weight. Sure does. Said he's only 80%, but he gets that point and cuts the lead to 7-3. To 
There's a timeout on the court. Our score, North Carolina is seven, Maryland three. And we'll be back after these messages from Budweiser. In all his preseason comments, Dean Smith, while conceding that he had excellent talent, said how far they'd go would depend upon their freshman players. Here's one of those freshman players, just a great rebound by J.R. Reed, showing you some great strength as he pulled it away from Derek Lewis. Doesn't play a lot like a freshman. No, he sure doesn't. So Bucknall, guarded by Hood. Maryland going with uh, something of an iron five, the way it used to be in college basketball. Three-second violation called against North Carolina. They'll turn it over. Maryland is playing very well the last couple of possessions, Mike, in the man-to-man -man defense. Early in the game, they missed some assignments, and Carolina got some easy baskets, but not so the last two minutes. Deion McCoy doing a good job, and then gets the nice pass to Johnson inside. Johnson puts it up against pressure and got it. If you can handle North Carolina's pressure, you're going to get some open shots. Excellent job by Deion McCoy. 7 to 5. Question about Tion McCoy. Can he play 40 minutes against pressure like this? We'll see. Thompson with a tip in off the miss by Williams. And Thompson has four. Maryland has six points on layups or tip ins, Mike. 9 5. North Carolina. That's a good call, Mike. That's a five second call. There isn't any hash mark anymore. I was sitting over here counting to myself. Any place on this side of the half court line on the in the front court, if a person's closely guarded, he's only got five seconds. I knew you were counting to yourself. I saw your lips. <laughs> There's you didn't Kansas. See my oh, what a game that must have been. Kansas over Temple. 67-64. Kansas has been having a tough time lately. And Temple's had uh, a great start. There's the turnover story. Maryland with four. Ranzino Smith, who shot a lot better this year, shot the way they have always expected him to. Good ball movement by North Carolina, Mike. Here's the steal by Lewis. Lewis against Popson. Got around him, and the finger roll went in. Great move by Derek Lewis. Nice soft, soft shot by Derek Lewis. And here's John Johnson picking up a steal, Mike. Tell you what, that will help you get back in a ball game. Maryland with a chance to tie as Tion McCoy calls out the play. Hood. Pressured underneath, threw it away. Hood got caught up in the air and got lucky that it went off Williams out of bounds. North Carolina plays their man-to-man -man defense differently sometimes than other teams, Mike. And that time they drove Steve Hood to the baseline where they actually triple teamed him. Good defense. Hood looking inbound. McCoy is trapped at the sideline. Got to get rid of it. Does the Hood. Hood lost it out of bounds. The Terrapins continue to take the ball over to the sideline, Mike, where North Carolina just springs that trap. Maryland has to play in the middle of the basketball court. Reed is back in, and Popson will sit down. Johnson over a screen. Now he's caught in the corner to Hood. There's Hood in the corner again. McCoy, three-pointer. Won't go. Lewis, offensive rebound. Followed no good. A tip is good. That's Dickerson. Great play by Derek Lewis. Lewis is a rather slightly built individual for a center, but he just pushed Scott Williams out of the way to keep that ball alive. He's, he's a great leaper. He's also strong as an ox. Johnson knocks it away. Lewis picks it up. Maryland tied at nine has a chance to take the lead. Did anybody tell Maryland that they weren't, they couldn't be in the game? Bob Wade didn't. I certainly, he's a big enough fellow. I certainly wouldn't want to say anything like that to him. Hood, the freshman from Hyattsville, Maryland, takes his jumper. It's an air ball. Kenny Smith. He'll pull up three-pointer. Won't go. Lewis, another rebound. Very good athletic ability to keep his feet that time. Mike. I have always wondered what Derek Lewis would be able to do if he played on a team that had a legitimate center and he was able to play a power forward spot. I think the kid would get about 13 rebounds a game. Here's Maryland spreading out the floor. McCoy down the lane, tried a tough pass. Great it hustle. back and fed it off to Lewis. Oh, McCoy, what a play. That's not a freshman play right there, Mike. Most of the time, you'd expect, you'd expect a freshman to throw the ball away and sulk, but not McCoy. He went right after him. Here's Lewis going for the steal. Whistle. 
we've got a foul oh. underneath away from the ball. That's a bad break for Maryland, Mike. Here you get a chance to see Tion McCoy penetrating where there really isn't any opportunity, but down on the floor he goes. Everybody's down on the floor, and that leaves Lewis wide open for the basket. Just a great hustle play. That foul was on Curtis Hunter. You're right, they don't get the foul, they get the layup. But they have an 11-9 lead in the basketball with 11.53 to go. And Tion McCoy is a very impressive-looking freshman here. Johnson penetrating all the way in. And a great pass by Lewis. Great pass by Lewis, but a great screen by David Dickerson. He screened out the North Carolina defender and gave Johnson a lane to the basket. Surprise, surprise, 13-9 Maryland. Great feed inside. Williams missed the easy layup. It would have been an easier layup had John Johnson not pushed him out of bounds. So Bob Wade calling out uh, what he wants him to do on offense. And they do have it spread out trying to use the clock in Carolina. Maybe doing him a favor right now, coming right after them. McCoy's got to be very careful that he doesn't dribble that ball for five seconds. There isn't any more hash marks. You can dribble it for four and hold it for four. Oh. Johnson got through the double team to Lewis. He missed his shot and trying to keep it alive was Dick. Carolina in their scrambling, trapping defense sometimes creates situations where guards are underneath. Lebo did a nice job blocking out. 11.05 to go in the first half. Maryland surprising North Carolina in Chapel Hill, 13-9. That's the story with 11.05 to go in the first half. Maryland surprising North Carolina. They're up by four. Part of the reason has been the play of freshman point guard Tion McCoy for first-year coach Bob Wade. Had a chance to talk to Lefty Grizzell this afternoon, and he said Tion McCoy, with some experience, is going to be a great, great player at the University of Maryland. You, we've been able to see here tonight, Mike, the first couple of times up the court, Tion McCoy looked a little tentative, but as he got into the game, he's shown more confidence and aggressiveness on offense each time. And back into the ball game to Ranzino Smith. J.R. Reed, great job of getting position underneath, but he missed the shot, got his own rebound. Lewis blocked it. And then he and Reed go after each other. There have been a couple of elbows and forearms thrown already. Mike, it was an interesting sequence. I actually thought on his first shot that J.R. Reed may have pushed off. Let's he see did. if we can see it here. Here's Reed faking. He throws that arm out and moves Derek Lewis away, but you can see Reed. Big, strong guy able to hold his position inside. He and Lewis get tangled up. Great rebounding by J.R. Reed. That was the first shot. You can see that left arm did go out. Reed's free throw, no good. Got one, ready, plan. Freshman out of Virginia Beach, averaging a little over 10 points a game. He has not been a good free throw shooter so far. Get better. Missed that one. Hunter tried to keep it alive. Maryland basketball. Like as well as J.R. Reed plays inside, it'd be a good idea if he got better because I think he's probably going to get a lot of opportunities in his career. One of the reasons Maryland is ahead is North Carolina shooting only four out of 14, and they'll call the offensive foul on Tion McCoy. That is his second. Remember, he's fouled out of three ball games this year, and they can't afford to lose him. They certainly cannot. If we've seen nothing else in this game, we've seen that Maryland's game plan revolves around Tion McCoy handling the ball in the middle. That was a great defensive play by Jeff Lebo. It usually is. He's there all the time. Thompson looking inside for Reed, who's being guarded by Lewis. Keep an eye on those two. Maryland staying in the man-to-man -man and doing a very good job. Good, nice job cutting off the baseline from Hunter, who bounces it to Thompson. He lost it out of bounds. I believe the ball is going to go to North Carolina. It's going to be called as being off the foot of Steve Hood on the inside. Hunter Trafton has nowhere to go as he tries to bounce past the ball to Dave Popson. You can see the ball hit the line before Popson got it. That's a great call. Clearly went off Steve Hood's foot. Lebo alley-oop to Reed. Reed blocked by Lewis and brought down by McCoy. Derek Lewis, you do not shoot the ball in his face. You certainly don't. He can block shots like a guy who's seven feet tall. And now here's J.R. Reed getting called for a foul while trying to defend Derek. They are really going after each other, and I think uh, Reed may have gotten something extra in after he had the shot rejected. Derek Lewis, as we've said, Mike, is a tremendous shot blocker. Good screen by Popson to get J.R. Reed open. You can see Lewis just stand there and wait. He didn't go for the fake. He timed his leap perfectly. At 6-7, timing is everything. Hood's got to get it in in five seconds. He's got to touch a player in five seconds. 
Johnson. Left alone for the three-pointer. And they kick it around a little bit, and Maryland will come out with a basketball. Johnson wants a two-pointer this time. Missed the shot. Dickerson foul underneath. Dickerson just committed a silly foul. He climbed somebody. He climbed J.R. Reed, and J.R.'s a lot to climb, but Dickerson going aggressively after the basketball. I think J.R. Reed might be a little out of control at this point, Mike. They lost the last rebound because Reed tried to slap it from one hand into the other. Thompson looks inside. Instead goes to Lebo. North Carolina had scored in five minutes. Great fake by Jeff Lebo to create the penetration down the lane. And he drew the shot blocker, Derek Lewis, to him. J.R. Reed was wide open. 13-11, McCoy had to pick up his dribble and then threw it away. And here's McCoy stealing it back on the other end, and Lebo gets it back. Boy, Tion McCoy is everywhere. Kenny Smith, nice beat into Reed, left open. Basket pass, the foul's going to be on Dickerson, fouling from behind, and Lewis wanted him to shoot that ball. Lewis was standing underneath the basket, and he was just waiting for Reed to let go of the ball. Great pass inside to J.R. Reed. Nobody there defensively. You can see Derek Lewis getting ready to spring for the shot. And my question is, where's the foul? I didn't see anybody hit him. Neither did Bob Wade. Neither did Dickerson, but somebody <laughs> saw it. Maryland Terrapins having a little discussion. 8.58 to go. First half, 13-13. Well, I'm just continually impressed with T.R. McCoy. He's just having a great... He has recovered well from some of the mistakes he made, Mike. And unfortunately, that last play that he made was a mistake. He picked up his dribble in the backcourt against pressure. And you can't do that, but he recovered well. So if you have to make a mistake, it's a good idea to come back from it. And he's shown us the ability to do that. See if we can see this... Uh... A uh, couple sequences ago here. This is Jeff Lebo penetrating past John Johnson outside. Great pass after drawing Derek Lewis. J.R. Reed, nobody's going to block that one. Question about Derek Lewis and his shot block blocking abilities. As we saw, not on that replay, but on the actual play, the play before, I think sometimes shot blockers instinctively want to lay back and wait to block shots rather than be where they're supposed to be on defense. I think that's true, Mike. And another disadvantage of trying to block shots is how many six foot eight, six foot nine referees do you see? <laughs> you don't see very many referees who were shot blockers. If referees played, they were guys who had their shots blocked, so they tend to not look favorably upon blocked shots. Coming from someone who blocked how many shots in his college career? I don't know that I ever blocked any, Mike. I had blocked. I had blocked about 4,412. This is Reed, free throw line, hits it. Three-point play for J.R. Reed, and North Carolina has regained the lead after being down by four. And here's the pressure. They get it into Lewis, and we've got Jeff Lebo called for a hold. North Carolina showing you the ability, coming out of that timeout, to clamp great defensive pressure on the inbounds pass. North Carolina may get two or three of those plays a game. Jeff Lebo said something to referee Dave Dodge, and Dave Dodge said, I wouldn't do that again. <laughs> See. John Johnson working in the backcourt. Double teams to Lewis. Nice move to get it up, and they get it up to Andre Reyes, 6'11 freshman out of Manning, South Carolina, who is probably not ready to play at this level yet, but there is very little choice for this Maryland program. They are thin on talent. Reyes is number 45. He does have the tools to play at this level. Lewis over Popson, jump hook. Great shot by Derek Lewis. He actually used Andre Reyes as a screen and shot up that little hook. He's got seven points, and Maryland regains the lead. Maryland, the lead. Maryland went to a 2-3 zone. J.R. Reed split the seam, got in front of Steve Hood, who's just too small to go up with him. Reed, who averages 10 points a game, has nine. We're down to the eight-minute mark. First half of one. North Carolina is playing more straight up in the man-to-man, -man, and they're trapping only in the corner. Hood goes baseline, gets caught up in the air again, and lost it again. He's had a tough first half. Every time he's penetrated to the baseline, North Carolina's trapped. Six, six freshmen out of Hyattsville may be a little awed by being here. Lebo for three. That three-point shot can just be a backbreaker, Mike. And if you've got Lebo and Kenny Smith, 
you want to take as many as you can. The foul is on Kenny Smith. Something of a touch foul, but they called him for it. I think the reason the foul was called, Mike, is because Tion McCoy lost his balance after the touch by Kenny Smith, and that clearly was the situation where Smith gained an advantage by the contact. So even though it was a touch foul, it's a good call. And for people who, who don't really understand the philosophy, that's the way you're supposed to referee. If it doesn't give a player an unfair advantage or an advantage, then you shouldn't call it. McCoy. McCoy looks like he's had a workout, doesn't he, Mike? He sure does. <laughs> looks like he's been on a Nautilus machine for about two hours. Great save by Hood, but right to Lebo. Two on one, and Lebo goes in against Hood. Hood did a good job, but Lebo banked it in. Good decision by Steve Hood, or by Jeff Lebo, to attack Steve Hood. Hood would have been wise. One thing they always tell you to do is to stop the ball. If you stop the ball and make a guy pass it, there's always the opportunity that he'll throw that ball away. A pushing foul. It's going to be called on Scott Williams. Now, the so foul's against Ranzino Smith, I think. Um, you're right. That was a situation where Tion McCoy was very fortunate not to lose the ball. He had lost his dribble. He was afraid to pick it up due to a double dribble call. Here you get a chance to look at it. McCoy's picked up his dribble. Now he drops the ball. He actually started to dribble it and thought, uh-oh, I can't dribble this thing. And he dropped the ball. Ranzino Smith was called for a push. Mark Carver is in for Maryland for McCoy. Lewis loses it, got it back, gets it off to Ray. Now Johnson is going to have to run the ball. He's capable of playing the point. North Carolina has scored 12 of the last 14 points. Lewis, bank it, won't go. And tripped a little bit on that sore left ankle. Ranzino Smith again. responsibilities defensively as the point guard. He just didn't get back on defense. Great break by Carolina. This is Carver, the 6'7 freshman from Bethesda. Gets it to Rays. And Hood has really done nothing offensively for the University of Maryland. Right now, he and Williams are in there exchanging forearms. Ball knocked out of bounds. I don't think Bob Wade put Carver in the game to dribble through the North Carolina pressure. No. And a mass substitution will send Curtis Hunter back in. Popson comes back in for North Carolina. The contrast is very stark. Dean Smith has a deep quality bench. Maryland does not. I think the Maryland players are in a stretch here where they're a little tired. There, Derek Lewis just took a swing at Scott Williams. They get it inside to Lewis. Power move to the bucket and scores. And that kind of reply to some defensive pressure is always a better idea, Mike, than a swing. It sure is. And Derek Lewis with nine of Maryland's 17 points. Hunter leads into one. North Carolina's pressure is just constant, Mike, both on the defensive end and on the offensive end. They're always attacking their opponent. Here's Carver dribbling, dribbling through pressure, got it off to Lewis and lost it. Now, Mike, I'm just wrong. Carver's obviously in the middle of the court <laughs> dribbling the ball, so. He did it that time, didn't he? He certainly did. He does not look terribly comfortable dribbling the basketball. Curtis Hunter, for the second time in a row, is left wide open from 13 feet. You can't do that with haircuts like that don't look like they should be able to dribble the ball, but Carver's obviously in there to handle it. It's 27-17 as North Carolina is on a run. And with 5-13 to go in the first half, it's North Carolina by 10 over Maryland. We'll be back after these messages from Budweiser. The announcers for this game are approved and selected by Raycom Sports, Jefferson Pilot, Teleproductions, any rebroadcast, retransmission, or reception without the express written permission of Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. Good look at Bob Wade, who has watched his club turn the ball over nine times. North Carolina only five. The turnovers have come in spurts, Mike. Stay Four up. turnovers very early, and that allowed North Carolina to jump out to the lead. Then as Maryland recovered and got back into the game, they didn't turn the ball over. North Carolina has recently forced about four or five more, and they've created a situation where they've gotten some easy baskets. Late substitution, Tion McCoy comes back into the ball game. And Hood trying to get it to him, and does. That's just great pressure on the inbounds. Now they got to beat the 45-second clock, which now reads 34, and I believe they started that real early. Hood, and there's a foul as he goes to the back. 
baseline. Hood has continued to try that penetration to the baseline. That time he beat Curtis Hunter to the baseline. Foul was on uh, Curtis Hunter. That's really a defensive drive by Steve Hood there. He was really in a good position to penetrate to the basket. And once again, we saw a situation where the Maryland players' first step was back away from the basket. Good defense by North Carolina. 27-17, and Hood goes to the free throw line. Just barely over 50% and missed that. Lewis almost got it. Kenny Smith inside to Reed. What an aggressive offensive maneuver, Mike. He was cleaning house in there while he was squaring up to the basket. J.R. Reed has 11, and North Carolina has hit its last nine shots in a row. They've got some very easy shots, Mike. Harper to McCoy. Shake and bake, and McCoy got free, then got trapped up in the air. Lebo, nice pass ahead to Kenny Smith. Kenny Smith all the way, missed it, and Maryland will get it back. Good job by Lewis. Good job by Lewis to get the rebound. North Carolina did a great job, even though they didn't get the basket that time, Mike, running down the court. Boy, he'll take the shot this time. Long rebound, pops it to Smith. holding on for dear life that sure time. was <laughs> well, he knows if reed gets away it's in your face mccoy telegraphed that pass knocked out of bounds by reed or hunter good hustling play by curtis hunter gets a nice hand every time you see curtis hunter he's got more tape on him than any, <laughs> any other player that ever comes out here looks like he's wearing long underwear he does. Shorts, two pair of shorts <laughs> Buy one jacket, you get two pairs of shorts. Feed it into Johnson. <laughs> Sorry. That's all. Yes, it is. Johnson guarded by Lebo. Player of the year in Tennessee two years ago, John Johnson. Good Hood. job by Hood to come and get the basket. Lewis powers his way in through the, over the backboard. He threw that up behind the board, Mike, and it came up yeah. over the top. If it went in, it wouldn't have counted. Good. Good. Lebo for three. What is the book? And now it's 32 17. North Carolina trying to run away. Lebo has eight. Mike, I don't know that I've seen a player in college basketball who looks more comfortable shooting that three point shot than Lebo. They could move that line out about four feet. He'd still feel comfortable. With that. Great shooting pick. Get it inside to Carver. We've got a push before the shot. Offensive foul against Derek Lewis trying to set a screen for Carver inside. That is two on Derek Lewis. Dave Dickerson, the starting forward, has three. Tion McCoy has two. North Carolina turned up the defensive heat. They ran the substitutions in the game. I think they've tired Maryland out. The Terrapins really have to tough it out for these next two minutes and 53 seconds. So it's still a ball game at halftime. They don't want to get blown out during this stretch. Not only fatigue, Dan, but foul trouble because Maryland simply can't go to its bench. Thompson. It's a, how many years has it been that you can remember, it seems to be forever, that North Carolina has had at least two free throw shooters in the starting lineup that did 85, 88%. They've had some great free throw shooting teams. And you jinx you did it again. No, I'm I giving you credit. Kenny Smith for three. 36, 17. No, those letters all go to Mike Patrick. I know they do. into the lane, a little off balance. Harper with a follow, he got clobbered but put it in. And J.R. Reed really banged him. Maryland Terrapin showing you they still have some fight. Derek Lewis with a tough shot. Now that's a good fake as he gets around Bucknall, but good defensive help by North Carolina. However, nobody saw Carver who snuck in there for the basket. Carver only averaging 2.4 points of ball game. Gets the three-point play, and it's 36-20. Thompson, jump hook. Nate Thompson's really shown a lot of improvement from last 
year to this year, Mike, he really looks like a much more confident basketball player. Behind the back dribble, a good bounce pass to Hood, got it to Lewis, who was wide open for a second. Hood, baseline drive. Well, there it is. That's what he's been trying to do. Good screen by Derek Lewis. Got it loose along that baseline. 38-22. Got to be quite an experience for these freshmen to play down here. Lebo for three more. Finally missed one. Lewis, rebound. And an elbow into Lebo. No call. Oh, Derek Lewis took a big chance there. Dave Smith is up asking for the foul. I think he had one coming on that one. Carver baseline drive and got it. I think Carver surprised everybody. That fake froze the defenders to the floor. Smith to Lebo. who got a whistle before the basket. And the foul is going to be on Carver. Mike Carver doesn't have a great number of minutes, and he really looks winded out there. 123 left in the half. If you joined us late, Maryland had the lead at one point, 13 to 9 over North Carolina. Here's J.R. Reed coming out of the ball game for a breather, and Scott Williams, the freshman from Hacienda Heights, California, is back in. Six points on the night for Kenny Smith, who's really taken uh, more of the scoring load this year. Gets the free throw. I don't know that there's anybody in college basketball, Mike, that gets from the top of one key to the top of the other key. He really can move on that fast break. He is not a spectacular passer, but he is a superb passer. Now the number 19 all-time scorer in North Carolina history passed George Carl earlier in the ballgame. 40-24. Car Carver's done a nice job dribbling through the Maryland defense. He said maybe he shouldn't he be has. doing that, but he obviously should be. And had an offensive rebound, now loses it to Kenny Smith. Carver has done a nice job coming off the bench. Lebo left all alone, drives. And he'll get a foul on Andre Reyes. Jeff Lebo did a nice job that time, sensing that Maryland was not really ready to play. They, they were still assembling their defense. You get it, Lebo takes a look and then penetrates to the basket. Again, that's a perfect example of North Carolina putting pressure on the defense. He drew the foul from Andre Ray. Lebo, another excellent free throw shooter, hitting 77% uh, early in the year. But he is a better free throw shooter, even than 77%. 58 seconds to go in the half, 41-24. North Carolina ranked second or third in your favorite poll this week. Lebo with nine points, looking for double figures, and has them. Here's that defensive pressure with 58 seconds to go. Ray to Hood. Now, Bob Wade using forwards to bring the ball up, which takes some of the pressure off. Probably not a bad idea. Hood, a very good ball hand. Here's the steal by Lebo, and he is fouled by John Johnson, who tried to get it back. And Hood got away with palming the ball the last time down. He was dribbling it nice and easy, and all at once, it stayed up in the air for two counts. It didn't go back down. It's a bit harder to dribble with somebody in your face trying to take it from you. 43 seconds left, and Lebo will go back to the strike. It's been the Jeff Lebo show for the last minute or so. It certainly is. Got 11. Dave uh, Popson doing a good job inside tonight. He has to take up some of the slack because Joe Wolf is out. He has a sprained back, may not play for another couple of games. Now, for some entertainment, you can take a look and watch Steve Bucknall sprint across the free throw lane as the ball goes up. He's nearly knocked Andre Reyes down twice. Bucknall is another tough cut. It's 44 24. They get it into Carver. Here's the trap. Good trap. He lost the ball. And Ranzino Smith then lost it out of bounds. And went into the uh, first row of stands. Well, Mike, you were, we were talking about how Maryland doesn't have much of a bench. <laughs> but the bench that they have was just discovered by Ranzino Smith. If not wiped out. And here you get a good hustle. The guys on the bench, they're not really interested in fellas coming, plowing over top of them. Good hustle by Ranzino Smith. Get it into Johnson. If 
all your buddies see you on TV that you, you don't really want them to see you getting knocked off your chair on the bench. Johnson needs some help. We'll do that five second count. They get it to Hood, who is more aggressive now. He missed the shot, and the foul is going to be on Ranzino Smith with only 15 seconds to go in the half. That's a good observation about Hood, Mike. He has seemed to finally settle down and get comfortable in the game. I'm sure this man right here wished that it would have happened earlier, but Steve, ha Steve Hood has been more aggressive the last couple series for Maryland. Steve Hood on the line. Good shot. Hood's a freshman, 6'6", out of DeMatha High School in Hyattsville. He has two points and 0 for 1 from the free throw line. And here comes Phil Nevin, 6'11", 250-pound redshirt freshman from Vandergrift, Pennsylvania. And Lewis will go out. They don't want Lewis picking up another personal foul. He has two right now. Not with 15 seconds left in the half. It's 44-25. North Carolina has steadily built the lead after they trailed by. Hood misses this one. Nevin tried to keep it alive, swatted at it, couldn't get it. Nevin is one of those wide bodies. Kenny Smith lost it out of bounds. With Bob Wade up off the Maryland bench. He wants that ball with six seconds to go. Former defensive back in the National Football League for four years. Carver's got to unload it. Oh, had a chance. The tip won't go. That is the end of the first half here in Chapel Hill. Our score at the Dean Smith Center, North Carolina 44 and Maryland 25. Maryland down by 19 at the half. Earlier they were leading in the ball game, Dan. What do you think they were doing successfully that had them playing so well early? The first thing they did, Mike, was they went to a point in the game where they were able to handle North Carolina's pressure. So on the offensive end, I think they handled the pressure very well. They got themselves some good shots. And on the defensive end, they gave, made North Carolina take tough shots. Take a look at the Piedmont Airlines halftime stats. And you've got Maryland actually shooting rather well at 11 out of 25, but North Carolina doing even better. I think one of the key statistics there, Mike, is the turnovers. Maryland with 13 turnovers, and North Carolina converted just about every one of those into an easy basket, and that's really where the Maryland Terrapins lost control of the game. North Carolina forced them defensively into things that they didn't want to do. And the three-point field goals is rather significant there, too. Four out of eight, and Jeff Lebo was the one who benefited the most from that. Jeff Lebo, the leading scorer in the game with 12 points. You can see J.R. Reed with 11, Derek Lewis leading the way with nine points, and you got to give Carver some credit coming off the bench. He came off the bench late in the first half, played a lot more minutes than he's used to, and he scored five points. University of Maryland will open the second half shooting a two-shot technical foul, and the technical has been called on Dean Smith. We do not know why. We'll try to check it for you. A little tough to get upset before the second half starts, isn't it? I think he was actually upset about something at the end of the first half, Mike. Well, I guess that. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that I find, Bob Wade walked off the court long after both teams had left the court talking to the three officials, and I wondered what they were talking about. You don't think he talked them into calling a technical foul on Dean Smith, do you? Now, this was interesting. Tion McCoy shot the technical. Tion McCoy had not shot a free throw all year long. Had never shot one in his college career. Well, he's maybe he got a pick to shoot the tee. Maybe Bob Wade thought it was a good opportunity for him to get his feet wet. Made one of the two, and Maryland will have the basketball. We'll try to check on why that technical was called. That's pretty clever of you to figure out that it was at the end of the first half, Mike. You're learning this game. Yeah, that's right. I figured not much happened at halftime that could upset a coach. <laughs> Can't get everything by me, just most things. 44-26, Maryland turns the ball over. Hunter to Reed, Powers to the basket. Oh, well, what a pretty move, got Lewis up in the air. He was able to handle the shot blocking ability of Derek Lewis that time by faking Lewis out of position. Nice play. Reed with 13, and it's a 20 point lead. McCoy by Kenny Smith and gets the foul. Good job by McCoy. And when you beat Kenny Smith, you've beaten something. One of the reasons that McCoy may not have very many free throws, Mike, is that he may not do very many things like this, and that is penetrate to the basket. With Maryland trying to control tempo, McCoy is penetrating only a very short distance and passing off, and he's trying to stay back defensively, so that was a very good move to get inside. McCoy calls 
Bills at the offense. And offense is exactly what Maryland needs right now, down by 20. And the foul is on Curtis Hunter, who went for the steal. That'll be three on Curtis Hunter. Not a real good play by Curtis Hunter in that situation. Steve Hood did a nice job protecting the ball with his body. They get it into Johnson. McCoy, as they beat the trap. Deion McCoy, good-looking young player out of Hammond, Indiana. Here's a foul away from the ball, and they're going to call it on Dickerson, who immediately picks up his fourth person. That's a tough break for Maryland. Dickerson played pretty well in the first half, particularly on the boards. He led Maryland in rebounds with four, three of those coming on the offensive board. He's averaging five and a half rebounds a game and almost 10 points. They can really use him in there. Hunter pops it. A little short on the jump hook, and Hood with a loose ball. Carolina stays in the man-to-man -man defense. The second half is starting the way the first half did, not getting the ball inside to Lewis. Hood with a tough shot, missed it. Lewis kept it alive. Got Reed in the air and draws the ball. No, they called him for a travel before he went up. Lewis gets up rather slowly. I'm sure that was a matter of concern for Coach Bob Wade. Mike, I thought for a minute he may have turned that ankle again. He's only 80%, as uh, we understand. Severely sprained ankle. I don't think he'd miss this game. I don't think so. Bucknell to lead ball. Nice pass inside to Reed, who got away from Lewis and draws the foul inside. There you go. Lewis is still favoring that leg a little bit, Mike. That time he got caught in between. He couldn't just, it appeared as if he couldn't decide whether he was going to try to play in front of J.R. Reed or behind J.R. Reed. And Reed did a nice job taking advantage of that indecision, pinning him and getting open for the ball. Reed will get a pair from the line. It's the first, and the lead is up to 21. He showed some much better technique on that free throw, Mike. Got that one again. Now hit three out of five from the line. And here's the full court pressure again. McCoy can really push it up court. Carver had a good first half off the bench. Mismatch right now. He's guarded by Reed. Tries to go through a double team. Lost it. Kicked it out of bounds. And it's out to North Carolina. Not a very good decision by Carver to go right into that double team, and I think that's what Bob Wade is telling him. Emphatically. And he also is having some words for David Dodd, so. Pops it. This is Bucknell moving on Carver. Pops it. Jump hook. Won't go. Loose ball. Hood's got it. Maryland needs a couple of buckets in the worst way. They have scored a single free throw in two minutes and 40 seconds of the second half. And that was on a technical foul before they even came out. Carver had a knock off. J.R. Reed is matched up against Carver, and Carver showed us in the first half that he can handle the ball a little bit. He ought to be trying to take Reed outside. McCoy got caught going down the lane. They stripped him of the ball. It's a four-on-two break. Bucknell walked. Traveling. That's five. Only one turnover against North Carolina in the second half. Maryland's committed five. Going to get to see Kenny Smith. You talked about his passing ability previously, Mike. That was a great pass to Bucknell. Actually surprised him a little bit. He wasn't in position to catch it. 16-54. To go in the ball game, and it's North Carolina by 22. This is just about what we expected. Lewis jump hook, banked at home. Lewis did a nice job getting in front of Dave Popson. Nice pass inside. Derek Lewis has 11, and here is an offensive foul called on Bucknell. And Mark Carver really paid for that offensive foul. Not only did Bucknell knock him down, but then Derek Lewis came down and stepped on his stomach. <laughs> Nobody for North Carolina in uh, really in foul trouble, and the bench is so deep there's hardly any concern in that department. 
McCoy recognizing the trap very well. They get it to Hood. Hits the jumper and cuts the lead to 18. Mike, you talk about the depth on North Carolina's bench. Joe Wolf isn't even playing tonight. That's right. Maryland stays in the man-to-man. -man. Got a big lineup in there now with Williams and Reed. Reed goes down a lane, lost the ball. The two big freshmen in there for Dean Smith. Lewis wants the ball and gets it. Running hook. Wouldn't go for him. I think that was a basket Maryland could have sorely used, Mike. Desperate, more like it. Kenny Smith for three. It's really a five-point turn. Great pass by Jeff Lebo. One of the things that we'll see more of in college basketball with that three-point rule where somebody penetrates to within a couple feet of the basket, draws the defense, and actually passes it back outside. Williams went for the steal, got the ball ahead of the pack is Smith. And it's 53 to 30, North Carolina threatening to run away and hide. has gone through stretches, Mike, where they just have not been able to handle the pressure, and the Terrapins are in another one of those stretches again. Johnson, three-pointer. Nice shot by Johnson, and he is run into the bench by J.R. Reed. They'll call Reed for the foul. Johnson makes the three-point shot. Now he gets a free throw. Well, get a free throw, Mike, as long as Rusty Herring ruled that it was on the shot. He could, he could rule that it was after the shot, but it appears that Johnson is going to go to the line for the four-point play. Foul on Reed will be his third. Come on, We got one. Got Ready? Three point shot, Mike, being 21 feet from the backboard or 19 feet 9 inches from the center of the basket, whatever it is. That's an awfully tough shot with a 6'10 guy knocking you down while you're shooting. It sure is. Johnson's free throw is good. So a four point play makes it 53 to 34. And North Carolina has seen its lead cut under 20. Timeout on the court, 15.02 to go, 53-44, North Carolina. Jeff Lebo has been an important cog in the North Carolina attack today with his scoring as well as with his passing. And he'll get an opportunity to see Lebo penetrate into the lane with a great pass outside to Kenny Smith, outside that three-point line for a jump shot. It's a play I think we'll see a lot of this year. Ranzino for three. Buried it, and that was a cross-court pass from Curtis Hunter into three-point land. You mentioned North Carolina coming into this game had scored 73-point baskets, so they've been making effective use of that play, and that's a foul call against Kenny Smith. He picks up his third. Boy, you can't help but be impressed by Tion McCoy. The freshman from Hammond, Indiana. He's done a great job tonight. He's made some mistakes, Mike, and Maryland has paid for some of those mistakes, but you do have to be impressed by the fact that he's played with such confidence in this building against the kind of pressure that North Carolina can exhibit. Kenny Smith lobbying the officials over here. Maryland gets it into Powell, a sophomore from Waterbury, Connecticut in there. He is a shooter. Carver drives to the baseline, but Powell is off to an awful start as Hood goes to the ball. Lewis with a follow. Powell is one out of 13 this season. A couple of scores for you. Illinois in a final just gets by Wisconsin, 68 to 66. And Purdue stretches it out at the end to beat Northwestern, 85-67. Hunter fouled by Carver, who reached around, and that is an automatic. Again, Carver's one of those guys, he does not look like he's very quick, so even if he steps around and makes a great move, the referee's going to call him every time. Good look at Bob Wade, one of his assistant coaches, Jeff Adkins, who played so well for uh, Maryland four years. Alley-oop inside to Williams. Good defense by Maryland, but Hunter comes out with it and makes a great move to the basket. Oh, what a move by Curtis Hunter. Derek Lewis actually blocked that ball, and it went in the basket anyhow, Mike. 58-36. The lead now 22 at the 14-minute mark. Good job, 33. And the foul will be on Derek Lewis away from the ball for pushing off. Got him with four now. 
Oh, bad to worse for Maryland. Great That's pass it. inside. You see Steve Hood knocks the ball away, and everybody stands there and looks at it. And Curtis Hunter gets away with dribbling in that crowd. Derek Lewis got his hand on the ball, actually helped it go in. Ranzino Smith fakes the three-pointer, goes into the lane. He's played so much better this year. North Carolina continues to bring guys off that bench. Seven for Ranzino, and the lead is 24. Hood, baseline jumper. Pretty looking shot there. And Hood has seven. Smith quickly back the other way off to Ranzino. The tip in by Curtis Hunter. When North Carolina is playing in transition, it's very difficult to find your man defensively for blockouts, and Maryland did not do a good job on that occasion. McCoy calling out to somebody, move, come to me and help me. And Powell did. Carver traps in the corner. Curtis Hunter took it away. They said it's off Hunter's foot. North Carolina is just all over the Maryland pressure has gotten more severe as the game has gone on. John Johnson will come in. Carver will go out. For North Carolina, J.R. Reed is back in, as is Jeff Lebo. I have to be impressed with North Carolina, Mike, with all the people they can run off the bench. I think they could just about wear anybody down. Sure could, and have so far. The only loss was to UCLA, and let me tell you, UCLA played about as well as they're ever going to play that night. Hood with a pretty move. Steve Hood doing what he did in the first half, Mike. He comes alive for a couple right. of minutes. Nine points for Hood, 62 to 40. Ranzino for three. Ooh, missed it badly that time. J.R. Reed with a rebound, but the pass picked off by McCoy, who can fly. Turns it into a three-on-two break. And the bank shot is good by Ivan Powell. Nice job by McCoy running the break, Mike. Hunter quickly back the other way. Dickerson with four fouls, let him go. Maryland did a poor job getting back on defense, Mike. North Carolina keeping that pressure on. McCoy calls out the play. Well, he's not only quick, he is very fast. John Johnson works for his two shots. Rebound of Thompson. Good defense by Curtis Hunter. He actually got his hand on the ball and threw that shot off. Francino Smith inside to Reed. A little turnaround jump shot. Forget it. Reed just manhandled Dickerson inside. He pushed him inside until he got to the point where he wanted. He caught the ball and was right up over Dickerson. Maryland in an offensive mismatch right now because Derek Lewis is on the bench. Dickerson playing with four fouls, tried to dribble it behind his back, almost lost it, then Thompson knocked it out of bounds. That's out there. Not very many things as embarrassing, Mike, as trying to dribble the ball behind your back and bouncing it off your leg. There's a timeout on the court here in Chapel Hill. 11 minutes and 34 seconds to go. A 24-point game. We'll be back after these messages from Natural Light. Thanks, John. To prepare the perfect round roast, you need the help of an expert. Miss, how do you cook one of these things? I've got some potatoes and um, some Natural Light, the beer with a taste for food, and some candles. Yeah, all natural, less filling. It's natural light from Anheuser-Busch. Okay, I open the natural, I preheat the oven. Now, is that the thing with the flip-down door? Yeah. I can't handle this alone. I, I don't think you can either. <laughs> Piedmont Airlines presents a phone number so valuable, you'll never forgive yourself if you don't write it down. The pen. This is Which the number pen? that'll get you airfares so low, you'll find them hard to believe. Hey, this has got to be a pen, right? We'll look. And you'll also get Piedmont service that's been rated among the best in the industry. So call Piedmont today. I got it. What could be simpler? We've talked a great deal this evening about the kind of defensive pressure that North Carolina has been able to apply. Dave Popson that time bellying right up to David Dickerson who dribbled the ball off his foot and then in trying to recover it, it went out of bounds. It's a 24-point ball game with 11.34 to go. North Carolina trying to raise its record at 12-1. And, and there's the turnover story. 21 total against 11. Reed, boy, does he get up when he takes the jump. 
been very impressed with J.R. Reed, Mike. He has really played a good basketball game tonight. He's been a dominating force inside. He has 19 points, and the lead is stretched to 26. Hood got away from him. Yes. Foul will not be on Pops, and it's on another North Carolina defender. I think Lebo got in there. Dave Popson nearly blocks this ball with his elbow. Lebo gets in, tries yeah. to draw the charge. It's the second foul on Lebo. Sixth team foul against North Carolina. Kenny Smith comes back in. Ranzino Smith out. Williams is going to come back in the ball game for North Carolina. That's a tough way to get a shot block. Bob Wade is up now. I can hear him from over here saying he was shooting the ball. And I certainly thought he was. He sure here. was. So the officials will confer. Both teams shooting exceptionally well here in the second half. Maryland 7 out of 11. North Carolina 9 of 13. As John Madry points all our stats out to us. Get a good look at Steve Hood, a very highly touted freshman. The difficulty for these young players from Maryland. Dickerson, a sophomore, who did not play very much last year. Hood, a freshman. Tion McCoy, a freshman. John Johnson, a sophomore, who played some last year. The only veteran is Derek Lewis. The luxury as a freshman is coming into a program at this level and being able to be brought along slowly. They can't do that here. It's also an opportunity for the freshmen, though, Mike, to show what they can do. And, and Williams just embarrassed himself. He missed the wide-open jam. Hood goes into the lane. Nice move and put it in. 13 points for Hood. Sometimes if you get a baptism of fire, you get better. Williams this time did the smarter thing and banked it off the glass. Sometimes if you get that baptism of fire, you turn out to be a better player for it. Sometimes you don't, though. It'll be interesting to see, Mike, how the Maryland Terrapins react. They've got uh, another game on Saturday against the tough Virginia club. See if they can come back. Uh-oh. McCoy with a pretty pass that missed everybody except the uh, gentleman in the front row. And the gentleman that you see right there, I believe, is getting McCoy out of the game. Yeah. That's one of those. Care for that one. That's one of those passes, Mike. That if it works, then you survive. But if it doesn't, and that time it didn't, because it caught Dickerson flat-footed, the boys can be going out of seat. The coach will tell you, you can throw it behind your back or between your legs as long as you hit every one of them. The first one you miss, you're in trouble. Kenny Smith walks, and a nice job on defense by Mark Carver. I've never seen Kenny Smith argue so many calls in one ball game. He has been upset about every one tonight. That's really a good point, Mike. I think it reflects the kind of intensity with which North Carolina approached this basketball game. Carver, tough bounce pass for John Johnson. Off Johnson, out of bounds for North Carolina. Lebo was in great position defensively. Wade adjusting those glasses. Maybe he wishes he's seeing it correctly. If he fixes the glasses, it'll be different. Uh, he's seeing everything that's happening on the court and on the scoreboard. It's 70 to 46, North Carolina by 24. Maryland showing that two foot zone again. Really, they need to do that because of all the foul trouble they have. Lewis with four, Dickerson with four. Kenny Smith, three pointer. Likes that corner. I don't think so. I hope not. Too. That would be a heck of an angle to bank one. Here's another pass off the trap. Johnson was trying to come to the ball, and Carver whistled one over his head. And North Carolina simply is not letting up, Mike. No. Bucknock got caught in the lane. Good move by Scott Williams. He's in with four. Derek Lewis was the defender that time, and he really couldn't do very much. He's got those four fouls, and Williams with that decided height advantage. The damage is increasing. It's a 29-point lead right now. Hood trying to power his way the lane. That was a tough shot there, and just nicked the rim. Smith on the run. Bucknall. Palipo. If Bucknall planned that pass, that was a great pass. Dropped the ball, Mike, and what made it a great pass was the fact that Jeff Lebo was able to handle it, to switch hands, and to make the layup on the left side of the basket. Hood went to the right, Carver passed to the left, the ball's out of bounds. It's a 31 point lead, and North Carolina has it. Here comes 
Greg Nard into the ballgame. Here's North Carolina on the fast break, and they do it about as well as anybody. There's the bounce pass. That was a pass. Yes, it was. That was a pass. But you saw Lebo, how smoothly he caught the ball and swooped oh. in. Thrown away this time, and Lewis will get it. Well, didn't give it to Big Spinning Windmill, but he got it in, and that's 15 points for Derek Lewis, who's had quite a game tonight. He's really played hard. He's played hard, and it's been some long odds, odds for Derek Lewis. North Carolina with that great size inside. Williams. Puck. Hobson working on Dickerson. Lewis. Both of them have four personal fouls. They're almost helpless in there. That's a great move by Popson, Mike. He faked one way, he froze the defender, he went the other way. Again, he's showing us a much more aggressive style of offensive basketball. Three-point attempt, swish, John Johnson. 79-51, the Terps may have to put up a lot, though. Kenny Smith, in to end. You can't afford to jog back on defense if Kenny Smith has the basketball. He really can get up the court. 30 at 81-51. Greg Nard. N-A-R-E-D is how it's spelled for now. Nard. Good three-pointer. Rebound to Bucknell. Maryland does not have many three-point shooters, although Hood can hit from out there and soak in the floor. A rejection by Lewis. Kenny Smith with three. Hood comes out with it. Nard to Johnson. Stripped by Lebo. Nard got it back. Banked it up a little too hard. None of the Maryland players won after that when they just stood there and expected somebody else to get it. Well, they were going to have it. They were going to have a difficult time going after it. Williams threw his arm around there and brushed off Nard. Lebo for three. Oh, Bucknell will pick up the first one. No, they're not going to call him a yes, foul. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. David Dodge is calling a foul. The against trail Bucknell. official is. Ball's knocked out of bounds, and the foul is going to be against North Carolina. And we'll shoot the one and one. Mike, there's an interesting thing happening out here. Bob Wade, I think, has abandoned hope of winning the game. He's obviously not going to come back from 30 points. But at this point in the game, he's actually coaching to have his team improve. He's coaching to get these guys some experience. As Maryland has been getting the ball on offense, we can hear him from our position yelling, push, push, trying to get his players to run the ball up the court. Lewis hits the free throw. Derek now with 16 points. What's that? Oh. Averages 15 and a half a game. Seven rebounds. And that's his average on the season. So he's hit both of those marks. Second free throw, no good, kept alive. Good rebound inside by Boy, that's some jumping ability by Dickerson there. He got that right over top of J.R. Reed. Shot misses here, and Reed gets the rebound. Hit the lead ball. Curtis Hunter, wide open, and he travels. I think that what created that travel, Mike, was the three-point line. Hunter thought about it and then decided better. No, I better not shoot that. Six minutes, 17 seconds to go in the ball game. It's North Carolina over Maryland, 81-52. to 52. We'll be back to Chapel Hill with more right after this. Keeping you updated on some other scores around the country, LSU in a tight one over Tennessee, the final 79 to 78. Indiana pushed it out at the end to beat Michigan State 79 to 60. And Purdue over a Northwestern club that's had some problems this year, 85-67. One other final, Illinois escaped Wisconsin by a pair. Nard with the basketball for Maryland. We're approaching the six-minute mark. Johnson inside of Lewis for the jam. 18 for Derek Lewis. Good pass inside by Johnson and good work by Derek Lewis to create that opening. Hunter. as he once was before all those injuries. Bucknall going to the hoop, got his own rebound, taken away by Johnson. We'll have a jump ball situation, and the possession arrow gives it to North Carolina. North Carolina is doing such a good job tonight, Mike, moving without the basketball. Their offense has been very fluid all evening. Try to get it into Reed, knocked away, but Bucknall comes up with it. Lebo, three-pointer. 
a little strong on that one. Hunter keeps it alive to Ranzino Smith. And he'll get the two. Ranzino Smith showed you some strength right there, Mike. Penetrating into that lane with hands slapping at the ball, he was able to control it and get it up on the board. Got that barrel chest. When he goes in there, you're not going to get it away from him very often. 83-54. Johnson. Oh, he was undercut. Curtis Hunter. Oh, Curtis Hunter came underneath him. The foul is going to be called on Maryland. Well, that is certainly what Bob Wade thinks, and he is up, and he's really upset about that one. Johnson penetrating Curtis Hunter. They can't very really tell from that angle, Mike, but from the angle that we saw, it did look like Hunter moved underneath. I thought he got there late. I'm glad neither one of them was hurt. This is Michael Norwood coming into the ball game for the first time, number 21 for North Carolina. Senior out of Henderson, North Carolina, averaging 1.2 points a ball game. Bucknell goes baseline. John Johnson, they get again. Johnson called for holding. That's his third. The kind of movement that North Carolina does on offense, Mike, really creates situations that cause defensive fouls. It's very difficult to play defense against somebody that's moving around. That's a special North Carolina play. That little toss in on the out of bounds play right in the lane. The man who gets it just hops and puts it back in. Johnson had the three pointer, then went just inside the line, I think. Doesn't think matter, he missed it. And when you miss, it doesn't count anything. Lee ball ahead to Williams. You can see the officials looking at each other as if, did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? One of them actually put up three fingers. I think Dave Dodge did. I don't know if the others were sure. Into Norwood. Lee ball. Nice pass to Williams. Missed the shot, however. Carver comes out with a loose ball. Johnson for three this time for sure. Bucknall with a rebound. Game is really becoming an up and down helter skelter affair, Mike. Nice pass from Lebo. Basket counts, and we've got the foul. North Carolina continues to attack on the fast break. And how many times have we seen this tonight, Mike? Jeff Lebo on the fast break, making yep. a good pass to one of his teammates, in this case, Steve Bucknall. Foul was on Nard. Derek Lewis really looks like he's dragging up and down the court, Mike. This pace seems to be a little quick for him right now. Now, when you've played as much as he has and uh, you've played as hard as he has, your team's down by 34 on the road, I think your enthusiasm tends to drag a little. <laughs> hard under pressure. He'll get the foul from Williams. Maryland, though, is still taking the basketball right to North Carolina. Yep. I don't think Bob Wade will let him do anything less. Well, it's really credit to the Terrapins, Mike, that even though in a situation where you are down 30 points on the road, and here you get a chance to see Mark taking the ball to the basket, that Maryland has continued to play hard despite the fact that they're obviously out of the basketball game. Jeff Denny comes into the ball game, number three, and Rodney Hyatt, number 11, former walk-on who got a scholarship, is into the ball game, and Dean Smith uh, clearing it off right now. Nard misses the free throw. And that's everybody he's got, he's got over there, Mike. Uh, Marty Nestle is uh, in street clothes tonight, as is Dave Thompson. Marty uh, Hensley, excuse me. And I said, Pops, and it's Joe Wolf. I'm losing it myself. <laughs> Bucknall has his own rebound. Picked up by Hunter. Norwood came in there, and I think Norwood picked up the foul. Still battling going on under the boards, Mike. This is some real good action by both teams. Ball with a nice step around move there. That's an awfully tough shot, but he gets his own rebound, goes back up, some good defensive pressure by Maryland. Gets see Derek Lewis, and there's Nard fouled by Norwood. Maryland hanging in there, battling right down to the end. Got a good look at Joe Wolf, the senior out of Kohler, Wisconsin. He's had a sprained back. One game ready. And they don't want to use him until he's ready. Dean Smith uh, really didn't believe he would need him tonight. Look at Greg Nard right there. 
The second free throw is good, and with 3.53 to go in the ball game, we have another timeout here at Chapel Hill at the Smith Center, and it's North Carolina leading the University of Maryland, 88 to 56. We'll be back with more right after this. Conclusion of tonight's game, join us as we'll choose a player from each team as the Holly Farms player of the game. 88-56, North Carolina over Maryland with 3.53 left to go from Chapel Hill. Turk Fregard is going to fall to 3-3 three and three on the season, and 0-2 in the conference. Put it into Williams against the Maryland Press. Bucknall on the pass from Norwood. It was a good pass by Norwood, but Bucknall created the opportunity with his hustle down the court, Mike. Nard being guarded by Rodney Hyatt. Ray's back in the ball game for 45 from Maryland. Harper goes baseline, cut off, put up and in. No basket, offensive foul. It's very difficult, Mike, against the North Carolina defense that helps out so well to penetrate all the way to the basket and get a layup. You could see as Carver started his move, Hyatt was already coming over to help out. He obviously had his position established. That's a pretty good defensive play. You don't usually beat North Carolina by dribbling. If you're going to beat him, you better pass. Hello. An assist and a hook for the young man. Everybody's getting, getting into the act for the University of North Carolina. Down to the three-minute mark. It's 92 to 56. Nard inside to raise. Turnaround jumper won't go. Bucknall had it, lost it. And Carver hustling but couldn't save it. Carver gives you, he doesn't leave anything out there on the court, does he? No, he sure doesn't, Mike. He's played very, very hard tonight. And he's he only had 30 minutes total coming into the game, Mike, which breaks out to six minutes a game. And he's played a great deal more than that tonight. He may have earned himself some playing time with his performance this evening. This is Jeff Denny, the freshman from Louisville Hall, North Carolina. Bucknall, who missed the shot here. Norwood missed the follow inside. Bucknall with it. Good fake by Hyatt. His jumper switch. Oh, the crowd is loving this. That means everybody in the North Carolina on the North Carolina team so far, with the exception of Denny, has scored in this game. And he's got 222 left to do it. Johnson in three-point territory goes inside. And they'll call the foul on Denny. Well, that's one way to get yourself in the box. <laughs> that's right. That was a special of mine. <laughs> that late reach in foul. I was always a tiger for the last 34 seconds. <laughs> Johnson at the free throw line on the one and one. Well, it's obvious to anyone who watched this game that Maryland has a long way to go under Bob Wade. In his first year, he doesn't really have uh, enough talent yet to compete. But the people that know Bob Wade the best say he'll get there. Mike, an interesting little sidelight is we get some substitutions, Nevin and Powell coming into basketball game. As Tion McCoy, who played so very well in spurts, has not come back in the game since he tried that behind the back pass. Sure has. North Carolina is second in the NCAA and only Nevada Las Vegas in scoring, averaging 95 points a game. Right now they have 94, and Bucknell will have the chance to make it 95 as he is followed by Ivan Powell. Bucknell has been extremely active here late in the game, Mike. He's a lot stronger than his build would indicate. Bucknell for two shots. Bucknell with five points. Way short on that one. 76.9%. He did not look like a free throw shooter of that percentage on that one. That came close to, closer to going in from the bottom than the top, but he looked good on the second one. North Carolina has hit its average of 95 points. Maryland with only 58. It's been a long night for the Terrapins. I'm sure they just wish it would all end very quickly. Nard all the way underneath, and it's going to be. It's going to be a blocking foul, and the basket will count. 
Once again, there's nothing easy driving to the basket against North Carolina. Denny coming over. Good move by Nard to actually create a situation where Denny had to move to step yeah. into him. Denny had position established, but Nard showed you some pretty good athletic ability right there. And that's the point about Nard. He may not be an excellent basketball player yet, but he is an excellent athlete. The three guys on Maryland's bench uh, who played a lot of lacrosse, one of them, uh, Walt Hunt, who's an All-American lacrosse player. Bob Wade said he didn't have enough athletes just in case when I got some. show Mike a good as you mentioned a good strong move to the basket a little left-handed hook to get it up there this is really a strong move to the basket how many steps he allowed in this game well, he took three <laughs> not sure how many you get anymore I thought it was two makes it a three-point play it's 98 61 you know it looks to me like Bucknell says hey I'm the veteran out here of this group I'm gonna take over and show us how to show you how it's gonna be done and Devin will walk We're down to a minute 23. Carolina going for the century mark. Crowd is on its feet. You remember last year, Maryland came in here and beat the then number one North Carolina Tar Heel. Whistle foul inside. And they'll call it on Scott Williams. Williams battling for the rebound. Came over the back of Andre Reyes. Williams, number 42 for the University of North Carolina, good-looking freshman prospect who wears some interesting-looking knee pads. Interesting is, is a kind way to describe those, I'd say. Look at that. Maybe throw is good by Rays. He'll get another one. You'd think they'd at least be baby blue, wouldn't you? Well, you'd think so. Ray's second one is good. 98-63. Ever since Maryland led 13-9, North Carolina turned it on, and it's been all Tar Heels ever since. Farms, center Derek Lewis, who really had to battle most 
basically by himself inside tonight. 18 points and seven rebounds. And the super freshman for North Carolina, J.R. Reed, a career-high 19 points and six rebounds for the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Holly Farms will contribute a $1,000 award to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. Our score, North Carolina, the final 98, Maryland 65. Dan, let me ask you about North Carolina. Do you see any holes there? Is this, uh, this going to be a team that is going to be in the national championship picture? Mike, I definitely think it's a team that's going to be in the national championship picture. It's difficult to evaluate a game like this as to whether or not North Carolina has any holes. Maryland doesn't really have the horses to play with them, but from what we saw tonight, without one of their best players, Joe Wolf, in the game, they just blew the Maryland Terrapins out of here. They certainly didn't have any holes this evening. Maryland. Maryland has a long way to go, obviously, but they showed some good athletic ability tonight. Uh, guys like Derek Lewis played hard. Uh, Teon McCoy obviously showed that he's going to be a very good player. Dickerson showed you some good ability, particularly in the first half, and Steve Hood caught fire at the end, so it's not all bad for Maryland. The second half of tonight's game was sponsored in part by Winn-Dixie, by Holly Farms, and by Mazda. The final once again from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The Tar Heels, 98. The Maryland Terrapins, 65. As we said, Mike, it was a good effort by the Maryland Terrapins. I think the one thing that Coach Bob Wade has to be happy about is the fact that even though his kids got down and got down big early in the second half, they never gave up. Our final again, North Carolina 98, Maryland 65 for Dan Bonner and our entire ACC crew. This is Mike Patrick saying so long from Chapel Hill. This has been a copyrighted telecast of Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions.